Hello and welcome to episode six of the Six Star Business Podcast. I uh, can't quite believe we got here, but here we are. I'm Pete Daly Dixon, <laughs> one of your co-hosts, and as ever, I'm joined by the inestimable Avalyn Clark. Good day, Avalyn. Hello, Pete. Hello. Can you believe Co that we have already made? Yeah. Some people don't even get out of the block past four. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been an interesting journey we've had some great conversations it's uh it's been a gr great just seems to be the most inadequate word uh but yeah. it's fairly early in the morning here in the uk so that's my excuse i don't have <laughs> my vocabulary brain hasn't clicked in yet but your brain's in a completely different state because you're on holiday you, you're demob happy <laughs> well yeah, it's it's heading that way. See, so it's it's five to five, and it depends what time you technically finish work. Um, but it is Friday afternoon for me, and you're right. I'm heading on holidays uh, here in Australia. We have these two week school break blocks in between each term, uh, in in the throughout the middle of the year. So we are at the first end of the first term already, and that has just absolutely flown. And uh, I always make a commitment to my kids to have some fun with them. Um, so they spend plenty of time being shuffled around and, you know, told to be quiet while I'm on night calls and, you know, putting up with mum being in meetings all the time and juggling 12 things. So this is the time for me to give to them. And it doesn't mean that it's relaxing for me. Let's just be honest and clear here. <laughs> yes, we're driving to a resort. There's going to be a pool. There's going to be all of that but it's not really that relaxing and they will expect me to swim with them at least every day even if it might be cold or whatever but the weather's still okay here we um it should be sort of low to mid mid probably mid 20s where we're going and uh yes so i'll need to uh just be with my kids and i guess fill their bucket you know we, we yeah. spend a lot of time filling everyone else's bucket um in business and, and our business bucket and there's all these buckets that we have really now in, in our lives and for my kids i want them to know that their mum was present with them when they went on holidays so yeah, yeah. that's that's the name of the game memories and memories and experiences i always remember my mum saying years and years ago that basically your your main job as a parent is to create memories and experiences for your children and if you've done that and you love them and and obviously the, the unconditional love is kind of a is a given or should be and provided you do those two things then you but that's about yeah. as much as you can you can <laughs> you can um hope to to do so yeah enjoy uh you you, you just well you deserve the break as as uh, as much as anything so it'd be great if you could just if you <laughs> could just you. click I your fingers though and and uh, be there without that five-hour drive i bet you're not looking forward to that no, and the packing, and then you've got to go there, and then you've got yeah. to unpack, walk upstairs, you've got to go shopping, you've got to settle down, you've got to, yeah. you know, all that but stuff. But it'll be fun. Mm. Change the way you look yeah. at things, the things you look at change. Make it a game. I don't know. Do something. <laughs> yeah. It will. Look, it's 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 changing my environment. So even though it'll be busy and, and full on, it's still it, it it's healthy and rewarding from the perspective that it is a yeah. new environment uh, for all of us. So we are going to have fun and that's the name of the game and not worry about work. You know, sure, there'll be email checking in the evenings and making sure the staff are okay, but really I'm there for my kids and, like you said, memories, to make memories and have amazing experiences. So, yeah. uh, <clears throat> A change is as good as a rest. Yeah. And in fact, that's just it. as I said that, I remember something I read in uh, Tools, Tools of Titans uh, yesterday. I'm, I think I said to you, I'm dipping into that every day. And uh, one of the headings um, for one of one of uh, Tim Ferriss's guests on his podcast was um, the, the the clue or the secret is in the cliche. And and what he meant by that was that if you if you hear somebody say a cliche like a change is as good as a rest, or you hear yourself saying it, stop, because mm. if although it's a cliche. The example he he gave was when he was trying to trying to uh, lose weight, and it was in a eat, eat more vegetables. It's just a cliche, eat more vegetables. But when you actually 
think about it, they're, mm. they're a cliche for, for a reason. So yeah, that, that change is as good as a rest. You're going to come back rested and yeah. relaxed and yeah, ready to go. That's right. I wonder how different I will be to you and our audience on my return. We shall see. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, so Great. Yeah. let's introduce our guests for this episode. Episode number six. Uh, it, was a, it was a while ago since we recorded the conversation, but I remember it as being a really stimulating one. Uh, it, it took a, um, uh, a it, was, it was a slant on six star business that we hadn't uh, come to before. It was much more individualized, if, if you remember, uh, looking at the Looking at, at the, the the person, the individual humans that make up the the six star business, um, it was a great conversation with Tina Brinkley Potts and uh, Andrew Erkins. It was the first multi multi time zone conversation with Tina in uh, Eastern time zone in uh, America, and Andrew. I was in the UK, and Andrew was in Western Australia. I think he got up at some st stupid o'clock, and <laughs> you you was like so four four different time zones, it, but. Um, uh, that's the, the the wonder of the technology that we've uh, we've got. So anyway, that's enough of of, of me and and Av rambling. Well, mainly me rambling. Um, we'll introduce you to, to Tina and Andrew, and uh, we'll see you on the other side just to uh, reflect on the conversation and um, uh, and say bye. Yeah. So enjoy. We'll see you at the end. Hello and welcome to yet another. That sounds like I'm almost apologetic for it being another episode of the amazing Six Star Business Podcast. Here we are. Uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, Pete Daly Dixon, and the other is Aveline Clark. Lovely to be here. Uh, it's good to good to see you. Yeah. So um, the roles are a bit reversed, uh, certainly from a time perspective, because normally we record these when it's. Uh, really early in the morning for me and kind of nice sort of wine o'clock, gin o'clock for you. Um, but uh, it's different uh, this session because it is the first session, uh, drum roll please, where we are literally spanning the globe from the east coast of America through to the east coast of Australia. Uh, so really quite quite exciting, really. Um, and the there, there, there is... And, and and well, the, I was going to I'm just don't, you know, don't interrupt me, please, because I was just about it, just about to go into that. This, honestly, you can't take her anywhere; she's always butting in. Um, because what I was about to say is that there is one person on the call who is suffering more than most, and that is one of our guests, one of our two guests, Andrew Erkins. G'day, Andrew. How are you? Hello, I'm I'm uh, well. I'm well what, for this early hour. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was going to say, do you want to, do you want to tell our listeners uh, where you are, what the time is, <laughs> and uh, just tell us a little, bit, a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm in Perth in Western Australia, and it's about 5.30 in the morning at the moment, so it's nice. Mm -hmm. Right early, the sun hasn't even begun to show up yet. And to give you a bit of a background in terms of me and what I do, um, I have a business called Digit, and we work with people around uh, their financials and getting clear around their financials and helping them through that process. Brilliant. And uh, a little bit of insight into the person behind the professional as well? Sure. Um, what would you like to know? Well, you know. <laughs> tell, us something. Tell, us, tell us something interesting tell, about yourself. Tell us something interesting, something that we're, we're, we're unlikely to know and our listeners definitely won't. Sure. Well, one of my favourite things to do when I'm not in the office is to pack a swag. And for anyone not in Australia, a swag is basically like a, a cloth coffin that's about the size of your body and uh it's waterproof uh handles all weather and um i'll throw it in the back of my car and take that camping find remote places and just chill out for a, for a week or two so it's my my idea of fun so, and, and in winter as well i love camping in winter so uh, which is a little bit counterintuitive i think for most people but i like it because it's so peaceful i love it yeah sounds ideal Brilliant. Well, it's uh, it's lovely to have you with us. Uh, appreciate you making the sacrifice. Is that a nice, uh, strong d tri triple espresso? Is it? You, you, you got oh, on yeah. the go. <laughs> good, good for you. And uh, our, our other guest is none other than the world famous Tina Brinkley Potts. Tina, <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Where where are you? Uh, and and who are you for the sake of our listeners? So I'm actually in the U.S. right now. I'm currently outside of Philadelphia, about 20 minutes outside of Philadelphia right now. 
And um, I'm a business strategist, online marketing trainer, and success coach. So um, I really like what I do, love what I do. <laughs> and uh, give us a little insight into, again, the person behind the, the, the professional. What's something that we might not know about you? Oh, I love metaphysics. You know, like I'm really into where metaphys where spirituality and science are kind of meeting right now. Like I'm so fascinated with that that I spend so much time um like listening to people on Clubhouse um, or or something like that. So that's that's who I am. <laughs> Brilliant. Very cool. Well it's great to great to have you have you both with us. And and I know from uh, my own personal interactions with you individually that uh, I'm I'm 100% confident that your your voice and your contribution to the conversation that Avalyn and I have um, bravely, stupidly, courageously started around uh, six star business is going to be uh, is going to be exciting. So w where I'd like to to uh, start these conversations, uh, I, I've you know become to learn is, is a good place to start is wanted kind of just to to tap in to to both of you it's kind of an open question andrew and, and tina and and ask you what what it is that um that you saw or or heard um or experienced perhaps internally uh around this idea of a six-star business uh that made you want to get up at really stupid o'clock andrew for, for you um but tina also to to give up uh, you know, an hour of, of valuable time to, to spend um, to, talking about this this um, concept of a six star business. What what was what kind of grabbed your attention and held your interest long enough to uh, to get you on this call? Oh, Tina? you want me to go first? Okay. <laughs> well, I think for me, um, you know, so many people are. Uh, trying to find what is the right way to do something, right? And, you know, getting to know you, Pete, and, you know, I'm soon to get to know Avalyn, too. One of the things I understand is that you guys really love working at your highest potential, and that's really how you create a six star business. And so um, I love participating in any conversations that are really about, let's really figure out who you are first, instead of worrying about what other people want. Yes, you know, you want to package it in that way, but you got to find out who you are first. So that's why I wanted to be part of the conversation. I think, I think as well to add to that, you know, it's understanding who you are and uh, along with that is just having a very intentional focus around the people you serve as well and, and understanding what the world looks like for them. And I think that as things continue to change, you know, even even things like this, right, jumping on a, on a call and we're all in separate parts of the world and we're connecting in a way that, um, you know, is... is a newer thing in the overall scheme of the world. Um, our ability to connect and understand one another is something that's becoming more important within business. So I think you know having a conversation around uh, bringing focus back to understanding people is a really cool thing to do. Um, sorry, if you can hear that, that is a garbage truck just in the background. I will mute my mic when I, as much as I can. Um, but what I love about what you've both said, Tina and Andrew, is you've brought people in. And uh, so when I say people, the self, focus on self and understanding self first. So I feel like we've just gone straight to the heart of it. And, <laughs> and that's, I think we're at the top of the roller coaster, Pete. How about you uh, push them off? So it's interesting that, um, Tina, you, it's, it's the first time, I think, and Avalyn, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's not the first time that uh, people and focus on humans has come up in talking about a six-star business. You'd probably assume rightly that that is the common thread going through it. But Tina, you, you've um, 
provide an insight there, which I which I think is is really interesting and perhaps one that's worth exploring. In that, um, it's the self. You you talked about the the self first, and that um, well, it, it's both scary and exciting to think about. You know that it, that it starts with us. Um, I don't really know where I'm rambling. Perhaps I've been, I'm just giving you time to collect your thoughts to, to come in, come in with, with a question. But but it, it seems interesting that this point, this point in the the kind of overarching conversation that started with Matt and Joanne um, back in episode episode one, that we we've we've talked about um, focusing on employees. We've talked about focusing on the customers. It's the first time we've actually. Um, Brought the conversation to looking at ourselves. So, Avalyn, where do you want to where do you want to go with that? Cool, thank you. My question is: Okay, so is this something that someone needs to be reminded of, or or or, or told to do, or is it something that people just you know what I mean? Like, what's how does someone get to the point where they start looking at themselves? Do some people inherently have that within them? Or is it something that they've got to be told or they've got to learn it and then consciously choose to do this? Mm, that's a great question. Um, so I, I feel that um, there's a saying, and I, I want to say it was Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith from The Secret, if anybody remembers him. Um, you know, I don't know why I said remembers him because he's still living, but he's, he's fantastic. But one of the things that he says, he says that pain will push until passion holds. And what I've taken that to mean is that when you are quelching what's really going on in your soul that wants to be expressed, that you will keep walking into painful situations. So um, I typically work with a lot of people who want to be a thought leader. So your business has some type of thought leader component. Even if you're a doctor and you treat patients, you want to be known because you've created um, that disease tinnitus when you have ringing in your ears. You've created a way where you can get rid of that almost instantly with no medicine, right? Um, that's just an example I can remember off the top of my head. But what ha what tend to happen is we tend to do things the way that we think other people are going to receive them. And so a lot of times you get so far okay. off the trail hmm. and off the right path because it is no longer about what your soul is calling you to do it is about what other people accept and a lot of people wake up 10 20 years and they go well what happened to my life or this wasn't the business i intended on creating and that's typically how it happens i feel as if there's <clears throat> it's about finding that that authenticity right it comes back to authenticity in business and you know to to be able to better serve other people you're, you're first looking at um understanding self and understanding what your values and purpose are and when you have that aligned that's when you're in the best position to be able to serve other people in the way that um best serves them right but it it comes from that authentic place first and understanding yourself first i really like that idea of um you know, pain pushes until passion pulls. It's like you need that trigger event in your life to really find out what is that thing that, because I think there's a, there's a gap sometimes between, you know, people, what people want to be seen as and perceived as and how they want to build a business and what they think it's going to be and then realising what that gap is between what they think it's going to be and who they are as people and whether it's the best thing for them to be in that business or not until they find that core purpose or that core thing where they can really make a difference. And that's where you find um, the the experience comes through, right? That comes through when you're, when you're dealing with other people, whether you're in alignment or you're not in alignment. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I, I can tell you that for me, um, I was telling this story in my coaching program right before this, because I do um, one of my sessions are at four o'clock. <laughs> Um, Eastern time on Wednesdays. But anyway, during that session today, I was literally giving the example 
of I used to own a home care company. And when I used to own this home care company, I am getting ready to say something out loud that I don't know if I've said this in public. So, you, you know, Pete, you tend to do this to me. Um, <laughs> uh, so what I explained to her was when I used to own this home care company, when I would answer the phone, I would change my voice so that people could not know if I was black or white. So I would go, hello, it's Home Helpers, how can I help you, right? Like whatever the version was, it was not fully being me. Now I'm going to tell you why I did that. So there would be times where I would have someone say to me on the phone, um, please do not send a black person to my house. Okay. And but now you have to understand, and I used to get a whole lot of crap when I would talk about this with my friends. I would go, um, I would not even attempt to try to correct an 80-year-old person. That's not my job. That's not my job to try to change them from who they are right now, right? But what my job was, was to say, okay, I could do that. Or I could send the best person to take the best possible care for you. So let's just say that I sent a white person to your house that you wanted, and then this person can't make it to your house. And now I have to make the choice of not sending someone because so now you're limiting me from doing my job. I can tell you that I've had so many clients that started out with that very same conversation where I could have reacted and got all upset, but I stayed in control. I ended up with them as a client. They ended up with a black caregiver. They ended up loving their caregiver right up until they passed away. Right now, I'm not saying that about race or this, that, or the other. What I'm saying was for a long time, I would change my voice and I would deem it being professional. I do not do that anymore at all. What, what was the point that which she changed? Say that again? What was the point at which she realized that that was not the authentic you and that you changed that, that behavior? When did you start answering the phone differently? Uh, I didn't start answering the phone differently <laughs> while I still had that company. Uh, I started answering the phone differently when I decided that nobody else gets to control my future. And I said that I get to be me 100% of the time. And I know, and since I know what that is, I'm just going to just stick with me. Uh, I mean, like that that's just the best thing that I could do. So. Yeah, it, it took for me to walk away from that field. It felt restrictive. Remember when I was saying, and, and now I can say this because hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? But like what I could tell you is that looking back on that, the pain kept happening. I'm in these painful situations. I'm in these painful situations that I don't want to be in. And um and then it wasn't until I was like, nope, I'm not doing that anymore. Like I walked, I, I decided I didn't want to be in home health anymore. There was too many regulations. You know, I'm doing wonderful things, helping older people. And we're constantly being like just all kinds of nonsense, all kinds of regulations. And then when I was like, no, I think I want to use my gifts in a different way. And life changed. So if, if that if that's part of the 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 jigsaw, if you like, of creating a six star business is allowing people that are involved in providing the service of the what I hear you saying, Tina, is that it's not until everyone is being fully authentic and, and being fully them, uh to showing up in the world with their full potential, um, that a business is able to deliver a six star uh, experience. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, because your business yeah. identity will continue to change every time yeah. a customer complains. Yeah. And so, you so have, Andrew, then I, you have to decide, right? Is it 
Is it is it the customer's complaint? Is that truthfully you, about you or is that about them? And if you always assume that the customer is right and it's always about you, then you're going to keep changing over and over and over and over and over again. And so whichever direction the wind blows, you will keep changing your company. Hmm. And so, that- so, so just say that, yeah, yeah, no, that's interesting. Uh, Andrew, I, I'm interested as, as an employer of employees, hmm. um, how does that, how, you know, does that resonate with you? And, and, and if so, what, what do you have in place to, um, you know, help there, help, help the people that you employ who are ultimately responsible for, you know, presenting your company to the, to the world, how do they become fully them, fully themselves? Well, I think it's about finding those opportunities for, I I think a lot of it starts with the culture that you create within an organization, right? So when I first started the business, the business and the values of the business were aligned with my values as a, as a person, because of that natural, yeah, I started the business and the business was created intentionally in terms of what I wanted to see and how I wanted to deal with people in the world. And then you start hiring people and you are both looking for people that have those same alignment of values and that same approach and you're also coaching them along the way um, to also um, you coach them along the way to develop their empathy to develop their ability to connect right and there and i find it's a really interesting question because there are things that we do within the business that we intentionally do in order to create connection and empathy and understanding and allow people to be people an example of that is yeah, I was gonna say you give us an example yeah um an, an example of that is that we create space within the business for people to execute on projects how they see fit right so we conduct experiments and everyone has the ability to choose something that they want to experiment on our current project within the business is uh experimentation around customer service right so it's not telling people that this is how uh, we want you to deal with clients and customers. It's uh, you figure out what you think is the best way to deal with your customers that you already work with and try something out, you know, experiment with it, go nuts. Um, some of our team at the moment are experimenting with having regular video catch-ups with their customers and they're putting themselves that they're being comfortable being uncomfortable because uh, accountants generally don't like uh, video calls, um, but they're giving it a go and they've, and they're learning things along the way about how it improves connection and improves our ability to really understand the people that we serve. And other people are doing different experiments and doing things in different ways. But it's all individual expression within the uh, this safe space that we create within the business, right, with a clear set of values that mean that everyone within the organisation uh, as a whole moves in the same direction while still allowing individuality and personality. And that's one of the things and the second thing that was intentional from the start with the business is that um we really want people within the business to be able to deal directly with the people that they serve so we avoid layers as much as possible and we keep things pretty flat so if um say jen is looking after um a lawn mowing business as her client you know i don't want to be in the way of her developing that relationship with that particular person so I get out of the way as much as possible. She looks after them. She, it's her client. She's responsible and takes ownership of that relationship. And we encourage that as much as possible, which um, for other firms in our industry, it's a little bit unusual because especially when you have teams in other countries and people in other countries, sometimes, and I really respect what you're saying, Tina, about masking yourself. I find in our industry, uh, accountants sometimes mask the fact that there might be people offshore in another location that are working with customers because they're afraid of how that might be perceived or judged whereas we take the opposite approach and go you know what this is something to celebrate and those direct connections are the most powerful thing within the business and one of the things i learned when you when you and i first connected uh, andrew is that you you have connections that the, the people that you employ in, in other countries uh, from an offshore outsource perspective, they have direct connections with your clients, which that's correct, right? Mm, yeah, that's which, exactly which right. Is, is, it's a, I mean, 
it's unheard of. It's like you, you use an out offshore outsource company to to kind of you, you just keep them in the in the back. You, they they don't they don't they don't see or touch anybody. Um, what, what's what's your take on that, Avalyn? That that approach. I think it's a very mature approach, and it's refreshing, and I believe it builds greater credibility and trust with your clients because we know that you know in the industry especially accounting there's a massive you know pull to have to use the offshore workers and and it's not just that industry it's across the board you know i have staff offshore and you know i over over time i have used or or gotten one of them where it's appropriate to or, or both all of them actually to con connect with customers and my customers are fine see the customer just sees them they're just another person they're not a robot and why treat them any differently just because of the location or, you know, what country they're from or, you know, anything like that. So the fact that you're being completely transparent but and then you're focusing, the, the end goal is the connection. Hmm. How on earth can you get that if you don't allow your staff to connect with your customers? Um, it, you know, it just doesn't work, does it? Because otherwise, you'd be the one trying to connect with all the customers, and then you're you're being a midpoint between you and your staff, your staff and your customers, and that is just an absolute waste and and very stressful and, um, you know, hamster wheel kind of environment. To, to bring I, I um, gone go on, Andrew. I just to bring it back to Tina's point at the start and where this first opened is that the the other thing around allowing people to develop those connections is that if you were to be in a job where you're not allowed to talk to the people that you serve and you're in a call center and that you get given instructions for some mysterious person that you deal with and you never get to develop any sort of connection with anybody, it's not very fulfilling. And so the decision at the start of the business to allow people to work directly with clients was as much to create an environment that was fulfilling for the people that we have within the business to allow them to feel like they're really making a difference. And that is the most important thing we can ever possibly do is to prioritize people's ability to be able to connect with other people and find fulfillment in the work that they do, which allows them to come from that place of authenticity and allow them to be themselves. Because I think you can be yourself when you're in an environment that allows you to be you unashamedly without having to hide you in a back room where even if it's never spoken about, you feel. Yeah. I, I do detect a... Um... A potential problem, though, uh, in, in that it, I mean, it's, it's not surprising that the word connect and connection has been used a, a, a lot. Um, all four of us know each other through the Connect Collaborative, which exists to help people, you know, build, build connections, build their own, their own network. And, and the problem that I um, detect, which I, I'd, I'd like to kind of uh, put, put out, is that um, and it, it potentially uh, speaks to something that... Uh, the question that Avalyn had at, at the beginning, uh, I'm doing too many um, connections round now in my head. So if I lose track of where I get to, someone might have to have to rescue me. Uh, but it started with what with what Tina said at the beginning about the the connection with, with self. And Avalyn responded with, um, you know, is that something that um, you know you either got you've either got or you haven't got. So when we kind of bring that round into what Andrew is saying about creating a space where everyone in the company can can you know connect with people that they serve but that that started with andrew's intentions in setting up the the company what if you don't have the the innate skills and uh, ability that the andrews of this world have to to form connections because without without that without andrew setting the 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 intention with with you know with his view of the world his business would look very different so, again, but back to what Avin said, is it is it innate? If 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 you don't if if you're not an Andrew with his kind of view of the world and and an understanding of, of connection, can you still have a six star business? Tina, I believe so. I um I believe it is innate. Um, I believe that it's just something you might not have been practicing. You know, I, look, yesterday I had a... So, so just, just, sorry, just let me clarify that. So you, when you say that it is innate, you mean it is inherent in every individual. It's just they might not, they might not 
fully realize it. It could be dormant because I've been okay. practicing it, right? Got it. But once, yeah, so it. like, it, it really is that you've turned and more than likely have allowed your intellectual mind to control and make decisions more than doing a head heart connection. Um, you know, I don't want to get into those kind of terms too much, um, but that's where I feel like I'd end up going. But um, like, Go there. technically, especially here in the United States, you guys can talk about where you're at. Um, we've put way too much credence on the intellect. And um, again, even when you're in school, you get A's for learning to memorize stuff. You know, technically, if you can memorize, you can get A's on your paper. There are higher forms of knowing. Intellect is down at the bottom. So you've been turning off these other forms of knowing and focusing on your intellect. So these things become dar dormant. They're still there. They still are trying to tell you something, but you haven't been listening because your reasoning mind has took over. Um, so, I, and I want to say to Andrew, I'm going to let you finish and go wherever you're going, whatever roller coaster you're going to go down. But Andrew said he used empathy with accounting, come on, like, who does that, right? Like, uh, uh, and I'm a fan, Andrew, I'm a fan right now. Um, <laughs> when you're talking about, you know, accounting rules and gap, you know, generally accepted accounting principles and all that kind of stuff, and the word empathy in the same sentence, oh my goodness. So what? So, Andrew, one of the things you don't know about Tina is she used to be a finance controller, so oh. she knows your world. <laughs> <laughs> she knows your world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you, you would know the challenges then, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I'm a fan already just because he used that word, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, th there's this really cool book uh, by Carol Dweck called Mindset, and I'm not sure whether you've read it. Yeah, it's a fantastic book. And, and she talks about the idea of fixed mindsets and growth mindsets. And you were alluding to before, Pete, whether it's something that can be developed and learned or whether it's something that's innate. Um, the idea behind, you know, you know, I think that if you have a growth mindset, then you have the capacity and the, the way of looking at the world that anything is possible. Right, so it may be a case of starting with yourself and understanding yourself and knowing whether you feel that this box that you're in is the box that you're in and that there's, you, there's no ability for you to change it. Or you simply start asking the questions around what if and seeing whether there's another way to look at the world, you know, and change your mindset towards possibility and the fact that, you know, you could, if you worked at it, develop a business that did things in a particular way simply because you're open to that expression, you're open to, um, both, you know, looking at, I, I guess, changing your mindset is what I'm looking to say, mm -hmm. you know, starting, starting with your mindset, starting with yourself and from that developing a business that. I think you're muted. <laughs> you're muted. <laughs> There's always one. It's usually me. <laughs> Who's that by again? Carol Dweck. It's a really great book. Andrew, really great. I think in the beginning of that book, she says something about rigidity, right? Most people with mm. rigidity mindset, tend, you know, that's where growth kind of gets stalled is the rigidity. So, yeah, I really love that book. There, there was a story at the start and um, when you were talking about schooling and kids and A's and uh, there was a story at the start about interviewing a bunch of seven-year-olds about uh, how they looked at puzzles. And you had a bunch of kids that would do a puzzle and uh, would keep redoing the same puzzle because they wanted to do it perfectly. And, you know, that was the limit of their world. And then you had the kids that would do a puzzle and then want to do another one simply because they loved the challenge and they loved the difficulty and they were thriving on 
the new problems they could face and failing at things and learning things. And I think that's an expression of those two different ways of looking at the world. Yeah. You can look at the world as, um, you know, in terms of that rigidity and that limitation uh, that, you know, you get straight A's and that's how you judge yourself and that's the way in which the world is. Or you can go, you know what, I just got to, I just got to see, which means that there's so much stuff that I'm learning right now and look at the world that way as well. Yeah. You look, I thought, I thought the office had got a bit darker. You obviously got, uh, it doesn't know that you exist. Yeah. I'm sitting still in one place and I think the, I can do a quick runner, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> we can still see you. All right. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I am, I am, um, just really fascinated, interested that the, the 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 conversation has come to has come to the self because ultimately that's that's all there is, isn't it? It's it's a it's a collection of selves. <laughs> um, my coach says to me that uh, all we see in the world is our unconscious mind. Uh, and uh, that's true for for everyone that that's out there. Um, I don't I don't know where, where I'm going with this, but um, yeah, it's it's about uh, personal development, self development, self reflection. Um, I, I guess that there is a a, a part of me. And we did touch on this on a, on a previous conversation. Um, the the what what the ability is for okay let, let's pretend Andrew that you weren't the person that you were and, uh, that you are and and didn't have you know didn't set such clear intentions at the beginning of setting up your your company um, what would be the opportunity and scope and um, sort of individual agency if you like of people in your company and people in other companies you know uh, that, that aren't yours. What, what do they have to, to be able to effect change to become a six star business? Is it possible or can it only start with the, the person at the, at the top? That's just an open question to anybody. I don't think it needs to start with the person at the top. I think it needs to start with the individual, but at some point, depending on the, the nature of the business, there'll come a point where the person at the top can influence whether that is something that becomes the business or, or it doesn't. So I remember working for an organization once that taught me a lot about the type of organizations I never want to work for. And <laughs> uh, at, the, at the ground level with uh, all of us uh, foot soldiers at the time, um, we wanted to create positive change. We wanted to do the best work we could to, to support the people that we were serving. Um, and we kept hitting barriers on the way up because of the priorities of the business that were set by the leadership of the business. Um, so, so I think, you know, within a business, everyone has the capacity to, within their own environment, um, be that authentic self and act in a way that uh, is authentic to them and deal with people in a way that, um, you know, fits the types of relationships they want to have. You have that ability, um, how much room and scope you have for that to become part of what the business is known for may be limited by know people higher up and by leadership so i think you need both sides to be involved you need leadership that's engaged as well as people in the business that are willing to go there as well and therein lies why there are so mm. few six star businesses mm. Mm. do you want to expand on that what are your thoughts tina I, I mean, like, that really was good. That was, like, profound. I was like, mm, that's so good. Because most people are afraid to stand in what they truly believe. And, um, again, I'm a fan of Andrew right now because um, he, he, had, he was very intentional from day one. Um, and... Uh, Setting, setting the intention, uh, allowing connection without needing to be the middleman. Do you know how many people feel like they need to be the middleman out of a fear of loss? 
just for that very reason. And he chose, and I don't even know Andrew, so I'm probably speaking for him or out of turn or whatever, but it was almost like he chose to stand in his own authentic self and like I don't I don't need to hold on to anything that tight that I can't allow human connection. That's powerful. And most people don't come from that because we are always mitigating loss from in pretty much every situation. So when you said that, I was just like, wow, that's pretty profound. Yeah. But, but that wasn't um that that was something learned along the way. Okay. You know, like there there are enough battle scars and mistakes and failures and lessons learned in terms of what wasn't authentic or what wasn't um, previous businesses and things you learn along the way that help you get or help me anyway get clear in terms of what it was I wanted to create next. You know that yeah lessons learned from past businesses past experiences past companies that, that have been worked for so it, it's just uh they just happen to be clear intention with this business right from the start because of what was learned in previous businesses of when that wasn't the case and i i'm still learning as well you know, and, and as a business, we're still learning and the, the lessons that we've learned over the last seven to eight years around think things you would never expect to learn about people, um, having having a team in the Philippines and developing a deeper understanding in terms of where they're coming from culturally that I would never have expected to be part of the business from the start, right? It wasn't the case of um, you know, knowing what would would come out the other side when we started the business, a lot of it has been things that have been unexpected uh, surprises along the way that have helped enrich the business in ways that we wouldn't have ever anticipated. So it's it's been a really wonderful journey. But the starting point for this business was to be intentional in what we wanted to create. But what's happened in developing it has was was unexpected. So it's been yeah, it's still a learning process. I think I've I've um, just I've been listening to you talk. I've, I've been reflecting on uh, what, what what's going on for me, and I think partly what it is is Avon and I set off to ha having a conversation around what does it take to to create a six star business, and you know which is a which is a it's a big conversation. And you know, let, let let let's pretend that, that this conversation did, you know, gain momentum and the roller coaster did, did really take off and six star business became a became a thing. And and you know, part of me kind of likes that idea. And but where, where we've where we've got to today, for me anyway, and you know what what we see in the world is is our unconscious mind. So you're you're just reflecting back to me what 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 I, I guess need to see. Is that it's even is even more profound than that. It's about um, helping every human on the planet recognize that recognize that they are a six star person uh, because everyone is. Every, everyone is ten out of ten, hundred um, percent. And and it's in it's in that if that if that was the the mission, if you like, and and there isn't one because we're just having a conversation it's a fucking podcast for goodness sake you know there's no no um uh, designs on anything other than than just being where where we are um but if 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 that was it then if you've got a if you've got a planet full of humans that all know innately that they are six star people um and you you give them the ability to express the fullness of their their six starness. How can you? How can you not have a planet full of six star businesses? Yeah. We solved it. We finished it. We we can we can end the podcast yeah. series now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what I got then, Pete, was imagine what kind of world we'd live in. Imagine what kind of world we'd live all in. All different world in, in all different realms and facets of society and segments and you know, across the board, just, just imagine.
So what? So what? So what? So what's going to what's going to change? Why do so many people think that that they're not they're not six stars? They're not ten out of ten. They're not they're not hundred percent. And and why do so many people treat other people like they're not six stars? What what what's going to change? Why why do why do the, why do the four of us and obviously plenty of people that we know? Why do we see the world so differently? What's going to change? And how how is it going to change? I think the change has started. I mean, you know, when you think about what just happened with this pandemic, social, you know, distancing and this, that, and the other, I think a lot of people had a lot of time to reflect on what is truly important to them and to and really start looking at, okay, I've been doing all, like, I mean, think about the person who now has to do Zoom from home and their child keeps running in the background. Like I had my grandkids and I was, it was meeting great. with Pete last week, right? And while my my granddaughter Mackenzie is going to make an appearance when she's here. She's gonna come wave like I don't, she could be in another room. It's like she has radar, my mom's on Zoom. And she's coming and making up here. Now, I when it. I was a controller, that would have made me feel like totally unprofessional. Like, oh my God, I'm gonna get fired. Like, I mean, it probably wouldn't have, but I would have put that on myself on how unprofessional that moment was. And I think this time that we just had has just opened the door of going, wait a minute, I've made some things mean way too much and some other things have been taking the back seat to that. And I think that's yeah. changed. Yeah, I, I find that interesting in terms of it, it wasn't whether you would or you wouldn't be fired, but it was your perception in terms of what you deemed to be professional that held you back in terms of how you wanted to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that I'm a caring grandmother who's going to just keep her grandkids with her to be safe, right? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> heaven forbid, heaven forbid that you're seen as that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, perspective is everything. Yeah. We've um, th this this conversation has gone faster than than any other. We we kind of uh, got to think about bringing it in for a landing uh, pretty pretty soon. Where 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 are you, Av? You've been I've quite, got it. Really quiet yeah. today. Oh, have I? I thought I'd been quite vocal. Uh, um, I, I, it's perception. <laughs> it's what Tina said. It's what Tina said. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually have to speak. The, yeah, the, the words in your head, the words in your head, you actually have to speak them out loud. <laughs> so just to reflect back and to sort of like give another question to you both, what I'm just where we're at and what, what's been coming up is obviously that internally, innately, we're all we're all six star humans, and and it's the it's all these other kind of external things and human uh, foibles and all the other stuff we don't need to go into as to why we don't accept it, realize it, and believe it. And something you said, Andrew, before about you're always learning, and. If there is someone like yourself who's at the helm of an organisation who is delivering a six-star business and experience, and we, by the way, we haven't even talked about what that is, we don't need to, but we're starting it from the internal, from the person. If you are always learning, then is the six-star business level ever really achieved or is it... One of those, it's it's a it's a purpose, it's an aspiration, it's what we're always working towards. We may not Great ever question. really achieve it. Great question. I think there's always room to that there are always things to work on, always new distinctions and new learnings that you have along the journey, right? And and you know, it comes back to 
checking in with yourself that you're still true to purpose, still in line with your values and the people in the organisation are in line with your values and you're doing the best work you can, right? And there'll be times when the best work you can do is not the best work, you know, as far as the customer's concerned and being authentic and how you deal with that. And the, the, there's always something that, that you learn along the way. And I, I think the, the danger is holding up this idea of excellence as equal imperfection right, where it, it may be more of a case that excellence is doing the best work we can do at all times and being okay with that. And as long as that's true to who we are, then that's what the experience is. Yeah. So I, th I think it's difficult to, to set this idea of a six-star business and um, hold this sort of, you know, how do you even define it? You know, what's yeah. the bar and if you if, is that even attainable? Um, maybe a, a better bar to set is simply that of, you know, are we doing the best we can and are we happy with ourselves and are the people that we serve happy with us and is that enough? Mm. And is there authentic connection mm. and open communication? Yeah. And all the ingredients, it's like, it's almost like if you've got all the ingredients right, then the recipe kind of takes care of itself. Um, but that it's not, the six-star business is not a box to tick it is, it is, uh, it's, 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 it's creating that, it, sorry? Journey. It's a journey. Yeah. 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 It's cre creating the, the, the right environment for that, for that journey to, uh, to be explored. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a point to that journey? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. Avalon's business is called Journey Point. I just had to. Yeah, <laughs> Good job. Any, 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 go on. No, I said good job. That was a good says, job putting that together. Good, good job. job. Yeah. I mean, is, is there any final observations or, or comments or stories anyone wants to um, leave before we, we wrap up? I know Tina's got another, you've got another call, haven't you, Tina? Uh, yep. I, I still got 30 minutes, so I'm good. Yeah. Thank you for uh, remembering okay. that, though. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I, I, I love what Andrew just said, and I think that um, I believe that we are here to expand. So I don't believe perfection um, can ever be achieved in any way, shape, or form. So I think when you're when you begin to even look at words like perfection, that you are really living in the terms of what other people think because somebody had to craft. What does that mean, right? And I think that this journey, right, is about expansion. And so that means at some point in time, you're gonna have egg on your face because there's no way of knowing everything that you're expanding to right in this moment. So if Great so, point. I believe, um, as Andrew was saying, you're doing the best you can with living in an expansive world and, and moving forward in that expansion. Um, I believe that's what a six-star business is. Great. Well, here endeth the lesson according to Tina. And that was, a, as, as far as I'm concerned, that was a, a great lesson <laughs> to finish with. Awesome. Great. Great final words. Well, I mean, uh, on behalf of Avalyn, Andrew, Tina, thanks so much for, for joining us, for being part of the uh, ever-growing conversation around six-star business. And uh, we we know where you live, quite literally. So we'll, we'll be, uh, in time, I think, we're going to be uh, hand-picking uh, conversations between uh, different contributors and kind of just you know mixing up the conversation and getting different uh, different viewpoints. But um, I've really valued and appreciated your your insights and your contribution today. Um, so now I'm going to go to bed. Andrew, you're going to get on with your with your Thursday. Is it Thursday? Yeah, it is Thursday. Time zones are weird at the best of times, but when somebody is in a different day, <laughs> to me, that's like super yeah. weird. Super weird. Thank you for your insights and for bringing yet another shift of thought into into this conversation. Uh, I'm so grateful, and Pete and I, and I know Pete's mind is going to be buzzing as he goes off to bed, and he's going to wake up tomorrow with some bubbles of like you know inspiration, which he's going to send me, which I'm really excited about already. So 
I just want to thank both of you for being here and being part of this journey that we're we're on. It's been a delight and I'm so grateful for your genius. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Thanks all. Thank you. <laughs> now, Pete, i got a question for you. How cool would it be if we could work with people like Tina and Andrew every day of our working lives? How would that make you feel? Because that podcast for me was just like working on, I don't know, I don't take drugs, but I could imagine that if I took drugs, that's how it would feel. Mm. <laughs> it, it, it would certainly be a very different uh work environment to to ones that i've been in the, the answer to your question it, it was that that's that's what i'm attempting to do i'm uh, and, and i think that, that there's an aspect uh, on reflection there's an aspect of of this podcast um which is about uh um surrounding ourselves with people that we do want to we do want to work with um and i know we've got an announcement about that uh in in a couple of weeks something that we've been been um kind of talking about and and hatching um but yeah just just um yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm speechless just the the the, the yeah I'm speechless yeah yep exactly and the, the the themes that are coming out in these conversations sometimes they they, they all kind of interrelate but then each one like what tina was saying you know, and giving her insights into her her past business. You remember, you know, and mm -hmm. just how she shifted things and how she actually made it work and how she gave them that six star experience. And Andrew's insight into, you know, how to, you know, go beyond but come from a place of um, not just purpose but love and mm. warmth and and that was it was interesting because i don't think those they'd never met before and yet what he was saying that he's trying to bring to his practice and the business that he's created is exactly the same as what tina had done and and it just oh it's just amazing and and i love seeing love in action because that's what this mm -hmm. really is and i know you know we're dropping the l word here and in a in a business podcast but that is exactly what it is yeah yeah and 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 he, he, hearing from Andrew that he, he, every human matters. You know the the fact that he's got a team in in the Philippines that most people when they outsource to the Philippines is like those. It's not that those people don't matter, but it's like you know they they're not they 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 don't get to connect with our with our clients. You know yeah. because they're in, they're over there. Um, but that, that was a real that's a real kind of walk in the talk. Yeah. Moment f for me. You know that um, it, it applies to every every human, and just that that kind of it, it starts with the individual. Mm. Uh, for first of all, that individual's belief that they are a six star human, <laughs> uh, yeah. and uh, and then and then taking it taking it from there. Yeah, great conversation. It was great conversation, and I look forward to actually be another, be, and uh, yeah, be. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say. I think it. I think it will be another one of those pillar conversations. Yeah. Um, you know, that when you, when you when you take it take it right, the the the, the theme of of humanness is coming through uh, loud and clear, and that episode was, you know, really taking it down to the individual human. So uh, yeah, yeah, okay. we're all capable, aren't we? We're all six star humans. It's just whether we actually are ignited, acknowledged, yeah. or, or, you know, empowered to be. And uh, look, I hope everyone else out there just got the goosebumps that I got and that you got, mm -hmm. Pete, during that because that was that was gold. Yeah. Yeah. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you for being here, uh, my co-host, Pete. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Uh, did you want to point uh, people anywhere? Yes, if you want to take that first step and looking at how you can focus on your business in terms of your people, customer journey, go to the journeypoint, uh, journeypoint.com.au forward slash scorecard. Uh, very simple, seven questions, finish it in under a minute kind of thing. And it will just show you the areas that you need to start looking at. And if you've never yep. done that before, it's a start.
Yep. And uh, it has zero cost attached to it. So uh, it's a no brainer. Uh, and I, I will say that if you know, you've been listening to a few of these episodes and uh, you think that you'd like to be involved in the conversation, you'd like to uh, be a guest on the podcast, then just email podcast at sixstarbusiness.com. Uh, or if you know, someone if you've had a six star experience at a business then please email us and and tell us about that experience um you know who it was where it was and then we can reach out to uh to the owner of that business and and uh, and and get them uh, get them on as a as a guest so podcast at six star business.com or journeypoint.com.au forward slash scorecard to take that uh, yeah. uh that free assessment Lovely. Uh, yeah so uh that uh that was that was then this is now us saying uh goodbye until same time same place uh next next week. week thank you pete thank you everyone take care bye